Hello, welcome to the course on ordinary differential equations and numerical analysis, also called numerical mathematics. Now these are actually two separate branches or areas of mathematics and typically each of them would have a separate course. But in this course we will look at them together and there are some good reasons, at least I think so, and I will try to convince you that there is a good reason to see them together because they have a lot of things in common. And one thing they have in common is that they are both massively useful. In fact, I, I think it's arguable that these are the two single most useful areas of higher mathematics that you can meet. The key word here, or the key notion, is mathematical modeling. Mathematical modeling has been at the heart of the scientific and technological progress in the past several hundred years. In fact, mathematical modeling is what started this revolution. What does it mean? Well, at the start you decide that you want to investigate some section of reality, some segment of life. You take a good look at it and you describe it using mathematical language. Typically, you would use the language of equations. There are also other ways, other tools, other mathematical tools to describe reality, but typically equations will do. When you describe a piece of reality using equations, you are in fact creating a new artificial or virtual reality, a mathematical world. And the way this world works is defined and set up by these equations or these other mathematical ways of describing things. So you are in fact creating virtual mathematical worlds where things may work in a different way than we are used to. And these are really curious and interesting. But for apl applications, we are actually trying to make mathematical worlds which are very similar to our real world. When you have a mathematical world, you have mathematical tools to investigate it. And you investigate it and you get some answers. Typically, if you have equations, you get a solution or solutions. And then you look at them and you go back to life and see what those solutions or conclusions tell you about life. Uh, let me show you a very simple example. Let's say that you catch 10 fish and you realize that you actually need some flint because you need new arrowheads for your arrows uh, and for a spare or whatever. So you go to the merchant, which is coming every year from Baltic Sea with uh, flint. And you know, because you've been to this merchant before, that for one flint, one piece of flint, you have to pay two fish. And of course you are wondering, okay, how many pieces of flint can I get? So this is a real life situation and we are going to change it into a mathematical situation. We introduce a variable, which is the number of pieces of flint that you can afford. And now you describe the limitation. What is the limitation? When you buy a certain number of flints, you multiply this number by two, and this should not exceed 10. Because perhaps you want to spare some, uh, some fish also on something else. Okay, so you want to save. So this is a mathematical model which describes your situation. And now we are going to apply the powerful tools of, of mathematics to derive some information. So let's say some powerful tool, let's say division by two. Yeah, that's a very powerful tool. So I use division by two and I get my answer. And I think, okay, that's great. I can actually bring home as many as five pieces of flint, which is wonderful. And then you go to this merchant and you bring six pieces of flint because the merchant says, okay, you are coming here often, I'll give you one more, okay, extra present for me. So uh, this happens. When you have a mathematical model, usually the answer that you derive is 100% reliable. That's the strength of mathematics. That's why mathematics is so crucial and so useful in so many areas. And if you look at some areas of, uh, let's say, investigation of the life of, of the world, uh, you will find that if there is more mathematics, you get more reliability. 
So, for instance, engineering, definitely. Physics, uh, most of it. Weather forecast, that's a different story. But also that's a story which I want to talk about in, in, a, in a minute. Uh, the important thing about mathematical modeling is that the model as such is reliable. But what may not work exactly well is the relationship between the model and the reality which it is trying to describe. Describing complicated situations is very complicated and it may be impossible, which is exactly the situation with weather. Weather is such a complicated system that we don't really have a precise description of it. That's a problem, not in the mathematical model, but in something which uh, you might call, faithful, uh, call faithfulness of the model. Uh, models have to be verified if you want to trust them, and very often this is not actually 100% possible, so we are trying at least to get models which are close to real life. Uh, this is a problem for weather forecast, but also for economy, for instance, because economy is a very complicated system. Now, when you are describing something which is more, let's say, less trivial than just two pieces of fish or whatever, you are describing a situation which is changing. For instance, I'm standing here, moving left to right, and as I'm moving, I'm actually encountering different temperatures, because there is a window here which is cooling the room, but not there, so there is a gradient of temperatures, so the temperature actually depends on my location. Uh, but if I'm just standing here, I'm actually warming up this place, so the temperature changes with time also. So there is always some variable, and time is very popular, but it's not just time, it could be, for instance, location, and there is a function which we are interested in, which depends on the variable. And because we are also interested in change, and change plays an important role in, let's say, physical laws, you can expect that your equation will have also some derivatives in it. In other words, what you get is ordinary differential equation. And this means that the moment you start modeling something which is less trivial, something which is more interesting, you end up with ordinary differential equations. And that's why this is a massively useful area of mathematics. And it's used almost everywhere around us. I will talk about it in a second. Let's have a look at it. You already encountered differential equations. Y prime x is equal to 2x. That's a differential equation. And in your calculus course, you, of course, learned how to solve it. Y x is equal to x squared plus c. Very important, plus c. Uh, Typically, in differential equations, we are saving time, so we don't write the variable x or t. Let me make a little change. 2x plus y is the right-hand side now. Uh, here, I used integration to solve my equation. Here, integration doesn't work. I would have to integrate y. I cannot integrate. I don't know it. But if you wait several weeks, I think two weeks, you will learn how to solve it. There is a procedure. It's just not that easy. One more little change. I am going to square the y, which is on the right. There is no procedure that could solve this equation. What I mean by solving, I mean providing a formula for the solution. That's what I mean by solving. Okay? So differential equations are extremely difficult, and they are very sensitive. Even small change can change a really easy differential equation, this one is actually also easy, into equation which is unsolvable. And it's unsolvable, not that we don't know how to do it, but actually mathematicians proved that the solution exists, but it cannot be written as an algebraic formula, closed algebraic formula. And if it cannot be written as a formula, then we cannot derive it in any way, logically. So this is a typical situation. The more interesting differential equations actually cannot be solved by writing a formula for an equation. So what do you do then? That's a good question. And the answer is, when you have unsolvable problem, which is typical, you turn to numerical mathematics. Numerical mathematics is a field which is trying to provide practical answers. The solution to a differential equation like that is a function. But in engineering, when you're producing something, you don't need precise information. 
just approximate information is enough. A numerical mathematics is a field which is devising algorithms or procedures which look at your problem and after some calculations provide you with approximate answer. Here is an example which you may be familiar with or which is closer to what you encountered before. x to 5 is equal to 13. That's an equation that you can easily solve. x is the fifth root of 13. Yeah, you solved it. Wonderful. Formula. Now I will make a little change. I will add x on the left. And again, we suddenly end up in a situation where we cannot solve it. There is no trick, no algebraic procedure which would lead to a formula for the solution. But the solution exists. This function has a root, or this equation has a root. I can convince you very easily. If you take derivative, you find that this function is increasing, and it goes to infinity. It looks like this, actually. That's the function on the left, and it definitely cuts through the elevation 13. And here is my solution. I can see it. It's right there. I just cannot write it. And again, numerical analysis has procedures for approximating such solutions. You do a little calculation or larger calculation, and you get something which is close to R, as close as you want. We will talk about it. Uh, there is actually a little bit more to numerical mathematics or numerical analysis. Let's have a look at this number. I solved the equation. That's what we say. I solved the equation. But what number is this? I mean, if you want to cut a beam of this length, how long the beam should be? What you need as a practical man is a decimal number. Where do you get it? The only operations that we can really do, I mean really do, is the, four, the basic four. Division, multiplication, subtraction, addition. And this cannot be handled by those operations. So again, you need to turn to numerical mathematics or numerical analysis for an approximate formula which allows you to get approximate answer to this solution, to this equation. Pardon. Okay. So in fact, the distinction between these two cases from the practical point of view is not really large. After all, I could say, okay, as a mathematician, I could say, this equation has a unique solution, so I can invent a notation for it. Uh, let's say something similar. Let's call it fifth gallows of 13. Okay, this is fifth gallows. And I can introduce it as a notion. I can develop properties for it. I can develop identities that allow me to use it in calculations, things like that. And I can start pretending that this is a solution, that I solved the equation. Yeah? So, in principle, from practical point of view, these two cases are not really different. The only answers which are useful to me, when you want to build something, is real numbers. So, the numerical mathematics, now we are getting to it, it's a field of mathematics whose aim or purpose is to provide practical answers to problems that cannot be solved or can be solved but in a way which is not practical. So this is a very natural pairing in real-life applications. And you can see this pairing all around you. This mathematical modeling usually ends up with this pair being in place, being applied. Uh, I'm standing here in a room and the static of this room, the fact that it doesn't fall on my head, rests, in particular, on some differential equations, which were then solved using numerical analysis. I came here by subway. Now, the subway has some automatic devices in it which uh, stop it in time and so on. And the more sophisticated ones, they are based on differential equations and numerical analysis. Before coming here today, I looked at the weather forecast and I took actually a lighter jacket compared to yesterday. Uh, weather forecast. Physics is based on differential equations, which are really beastly, no way, no chance of solving them, and therefore massive numerical calculations. The strongest, the most powerful computer in this country is actually dedicated to providing weather forecast. Numerical methods are used heavily. I look out of the window, I see a car, which is much more efficient than it used to be 20, 30 years ago. Why? Because when they design new engines, they look at the combustion process inside a cylinder, and they describe it using differential equations. They have a look at it using numerical mathematics, and they design a much more efficient cylinder with much more efficient combustion. So you can see this pairing, differential equations, numerical analysis, pretty much everywhere. You can see them in medicine, you can see them in economy, in biology, 
military science. In a way, uh, this is really, I'm not afraid to go out and say it, really the most useful mathematics, unless you count multiplication tables, counting on fingers, that's also massively useful. But from higher mathematics, this is the king, this pair. So that's the main idea of this course. I'm going to show you the interconnection between these two fields and how to work with them. I will show you the basic ideas. In a way, this is a theoretical point of view at the world and practical point of view. They go together, and at the end of this course, I hope you'll agree with me that this was perhaps the most fun course in mathematics that you took because it's very, very applicable. Okay, let's go for it.